Hello everybody, uh, this is Owen Colfer here, um, author of the Artemis Fowl books and the upcoming Fowl Twins from Lovely People at uh, HarperCollins, which will be coming out on November the 5th, remember, remember, the 5th of November. And in honour of uh, Twins Day, I would like to read you um, a little description of the twin, the Fowl Twins, Miles and Beckett, uh, from the beginning of the book. But to do that, I must first don the magical old man spectacles, uh, which allow me to see uh, further than I ordinarily might, especially small squiggly things like letters on a page. So without further ado, I shall read a couple of pages um, from uh, The Foul Twins. Now, I imagine that I have a lovely deep voice, a little bit like Pierce Brosnan crossed with Richard Burton, but uh, my friends tell me this is not the case, that I sound a little bit like a an Irish Roland Rat, if any of you remember him. So please forgive me for that. Anyway. Behold Miles and Beckett Fowl passing a late summer evening on the family's private beach. If you look past the superficial differences, wardrobe, spectacles, hairstyles and so on, you notice that the boys' facial features are very similar but not absolutely identical. This is because they are dizygotic twins and were, in fact, the first recorded non-identical twins to be born conjoined, albeit only from wrist to little finger. The attending surgeon separated them with a flash of her scalpel and neither twin suffered any ill effects apart from matching pink scars that ran along the outside of their palms. Miles and Beckett often touched scars to comfort each other. It was their version of a high five, which they called a wrist bump. This habit was both touching and slightly gross. Apart from their features, the fraternal twins were, as one tutor noted, very different animals. Miles had an IQ of 170 and was fanatically neat, while Beckett's IQ was a mystery because he chewed the test into pulpy blobs from which he made a sculpture of a hamster in a bad mood, which he titled Angry Hamster. Also, Beckett was far from neat. In fact, his parents were forced to take up mindfulness just to calm themselves down whenever they tried to put some order on his catastrophically untidy side of the bedroom. It was obvious from their early days in a double cradle that the twins did not share similar personality. When they were teething, Beckett would chew pacifiers ragged, while Miles chose to nibble thoughtfully on the eraser end of a pencil. As a toddler, Miles liked to emulate his big brother Artemis by wearing tiny black suits that had to be custom made. Beckett preferred to run free as nature intended and when he finally did agree to wear something it was plastic training pants in which he stored supplies including his pet goldfish Gloop named for the sound it made or at least the sound the goldfish was blamed for. As the brothers grew older the differences between them became more obvious. Miles became ever more fastidious 3D printing a fresh suit every day and taming his wild jet black foul hair with a seaweed based gel that moisturised the scalp and nourished the brain. While Beckett made zero attempt to tame the blonde curls that he had inherited from his mother's side of the family and continued to sulk when he was forced to wear any new clothes with the exception of the only article he never removed, a golden necktie that had once been gloop. Miles had cured and laminated the goldfish when it passed away and Beckett wore it always as a keepsake. This habit too was both touching and slightly gross. <laughs>